So now for our proof. If we are going to prove that AD over DB is equal to AE over EC, this is what you need to do. Firstly, your sketch with our sketch, you want to make two very important constructions. And these two constructions, we will make the constructions and then we will explain them. The main idea is you basically want to understand why we are making this construction. Because many times with some proofs, it's always make this construction, make this construction. But then sometimes if you don't know why you're making that construction, it's a bit difficult to grasp the proof. So we are trying to prove this, right? So for us to prove this, we are going to make use of two triangles at a time. So what I mean is the triangles we're going to use is first we're going to use we're going to use ADE together together with DEC. Now the main idea for us using these two triangles together is that these two triangles when you want to work out the area of these two triangles. Firstly, for triangle ADE, you see triangle ADE if you look at AE as your base, right, it means that this line there, you can make that your perpendicular height, you see. So for ADE, you have your perpendicular height here and you have your base there. Now what you want to take note of is, when you now consider the triangle DEC, this triangle DEC here, if you consider EC as the base, you want to remember that your perpendicular height is going to be a line from this tip here until there. You see, triangles, when you work out your area, let me just redraw this so that it looks better for the eyes. If you had a triangle like this one, right, the area of this triangle is basically half base times height. Now the idea is your base is that line there. Your perpendicular height is a line from the tip of the triangle going straight downwards, you see. So straight downwards towards the base, you know, or rather straight downwards towards where the base is, you see. So in our case here, this line would go straight downwards. There we go, you see. This is your base. This is your perpendicular height. There you go. So hence why for this one, you see, if this is your base, right? If you're looking at this as your base, your perpendicular height needs to be a line straight from the tip going towards where your base is you see because your perpendicular height needs to be perpendicular to your base you see that's why they call it a perpendicular height it has nothing to do with going straight downward exactly all you need to remember is that your perpendicular height is perpendicular to the base you see so if your if your base is here your perpendicular height needs to be a line that is going to be perpendicular in that order you see so the reason for stating all this is our construction right one of our constructions for our sketches is going to be this line here now if we construct this line we can basically say that you see draw h from d perpendicular to ae that's our first construction for whatever we're going to prove here you need to draw a line from d going towards ae those need to be perpendicular that's your first construction. Now, once you've made that construction, this is again where things start to make a bit more sense as to why we make this construction. So we are trying to prove this, right? But before we can even worry about that, we said we need to focus on two triangles at a time. And we said you need to focus on ADE and DEC, right? That's what we'll focus on at first. Later on, we're going to focus on ADE and DEB. You see so for now we've made our construction now with that construction being made you want to write out formulas for the areas of your two triangles you see here that's your h in relation to this triangle and then that's your h there in relation to a d e you see h is the perpendicular height for both triangles you see so I keep saying you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, uh, it's driving me nuts. But if you do see, just let me know in the comments. So let's carry on. In terms of us writing two formulas for the areas of this triangle, one thing you want to do is write down the area of the one at the top first over the area of the one at the bottom. So what I mean is the area of triangle ADE 
you're going to write it over the area of triangle D E C. So yeah, we're just gonna say the area of A D E, we want to write it over the area of triangle D E C. Those two areas, we know that they're both equal to half base times height. However, for the one at the top, we can say a half. Our base is A E and our perpendicular height, we know it is H. For the bottom one, we can do the same. You see, half multiplied by the base. You see here, we said if you're looking at this triangle, you can make this your base. You see, if A, if E, C is your base, it means that your perpendicular height is H. You see, that H there. There we go. That's the first thing you write out for your proof. The area of this triangle there over the area of this triangle there. Now, what you want to note is what's happening here is the half there cancels the half there. The H there cancels the H there, and then you have A E over E C. Then you leave that there. That's where this A E over E C is going to come from. So that being done, we need to repeat this process for A D E and D E B. You see, we just need to do the exact same thing using the exact same analogy. Now for triangle A, D, E and triangle B, D, E, we want to use this same idea. What I mean is, firstly, if you are now looking at A, D, E, you could also consider A, D as your base. If A, D becomes your base, it means that that dotted line can be your perpendicular height, you see, because we have a base here, you can make this your perpendicular height as well. That being said, we know that if you're now looking at it in relation to this triangle here, can you see that this triangle here, you can look at this as the base. And then if you look at this as your base, remember we said your perpendicular height needs to be aligned from the tip there and it needs to go straight down so that it is perpendicular to your base. Now, if you check, you see, this is the same as that line. This K there is your perpendicular height for ADE, and it can also be your perpendicular height for BDE. You see, this is your triangle. So if you consider this as your base, this can be a perpendicular height. So that being said, what we did here, we're going to do the exact same here. We are going to write out the areas of these two under each other. What we are going to write down is the area of triangle ADE. We know that this, the area of triangle ADE, we can write it over the area of triangle BDE. If we do that, we know that for ADE, this is a half. The base, we can basically refer that, the base, we can basically refer to that as AD. Now you may be thinking to yourself, okay, fine, when we started, we said draw H from D perpendicular to AE. So for K, we can basically do the same thing before we even write this. We can basically just put the draw K from E perpendicular to AD so that you have your theorem going well for you. So if you note, I did not put both K and H together in this explanation because that's just gonna make things worse, you know. When you have too many lines flying around, it sometimes becomes a bit difficult to understand. So you can see the way I am trying to go about this. You see, it is exactly the same way you want to go about it in an exam. You don't have to just throw everything on the paper and try and figure out what you wrote down. No, bit, bit by bit. Do the one for H, finish with it. You see, it's now there for us to do stuff with it later. And then halfway along the line, we now can say draw K from E perpendicular to A, D. Now we have done that. And now we're writing this out. Area of triangle A, D, E over the area of triangle B, D, E. Those two areas, we say to the one at the top, it's half. The base here is A, D, half base times the perpendicular height, which is K. For the bottom, we know that it's the same idea. You see this triangle at the bottom here, B, D, E. We know that the area of that triangle is a half. Our base, we say it is D, B, you see? And then if this is our base, our perpendicular height has to be a, aligned from this point going perpendicular to the base. 
because if your base was like a line extended it would need to meet your height at an angle of 90 degrees that's why we refer to it as a perpendicular height so that value here we know that's just k and then you can see what's going to happen here the half cancels the half the k cancels the k and then you have the ad over bd left and you can see where that ad over bd is going to come from you see we have this here and we have this there now the last thing we have to write is very simple you see because you have done the hard work here you have done the hard work now you just need to write out the last bit of info to just get your marks now for that to happen what you want to remember is as a law that you want to remember whenever you have two triangles this one here right and this one here and you see i drew that slowly i did not even edit that fast because i want you to see this triangle here and this triangle there as long as they're in between parallel lines the areas of those two triangles are going to be equal to each other that's a law so basically all you want to state is that the area of that one triangle is equal to the area of that one there so if those two areas are equal to each other it means that this ratio here which is this value is equal to this ratio here which is this value because at the top those are the same anyways so if we can show that the bottom portions are the same then we can easily just say this is equal to that which is boiling down to this being equal to that so the wording let's just put that out there we said that the area of DEC is going to be equal to the area of BDE. That's by default because there are triangles between parallel lines. So let's just write that out. There we go. We have written that the area of triangle DEC is equal to the area of triangle BDE. Our reason is that DE is parallel to BC. And that's exactly how you can lay it out in your exam. Because these two are equal to each other, you can then say, therefore, the area of this here is equal to the area of this here. There we go. You see, you've just seen that the ratio here is going to be equal to the ratio there. So obviously, right at the end, you can then say, there we go and you can see this thing filled the whole screen because yeah it is what it is but you can see the main idea here is knowing why do you make the constructions how do you use the constructions and knowing that the area of this small triangle down here is equal to the area of that one over there those are the key things for this theorem and you saw how we went through it we broke things bit by bit now you can see the things that you would have written down, we say it, you want to draw your line for H and then make use of it. Try and draw it and then use it. Once you have used it, draw the one for K afterwards and then use it. Once you've done those two, then you can just remember this here. The area of the triangle that you put at the bottom here is equal to the area of the one that you put at the bottom there. So because those are equal to each other, it means that this whole thing here is equal to that whole thing there, which is what we wrote down over there. And then as long as these are equal, we said this, we simplified it to this value. This, we simplified it to that value, you see, which is what they want us to prove in the first place. Yeah, this tutorial was super long. I don't know how long it is actually, but if you got this far, then yeah, I think it was pretty worth it. So if this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it because they probably need it.